that stuff and weird. What we got going on today, everyone is dying to know. We have the 10 most unsolved mysteries in Pennsylvania that we're going to go Ooh. over. Now, okay. each one, they're only they're only a couple sentences long. There's about like, again, there's 10 of them, mm -hmm. but I'm sure from what I'm about to read, um, it'll stir the conversation and we'll probably stay on a couple of these topics longer than like 30 seconds or something like that. But the reason why we're doing Pennsylvania is because lately um, we've had a lot of listeners from Pennsylvania. So as a thank you, we're giving you guys something a little bit special, something about your own state. Aww. And uh, it, these are from only in your state.com. So if you are curious and you're in, you know, a state that we're not covering right now, you can look it up yourself for uh, for these different mysteries and everything like that. So we'll go over one by one. We'll get some uh, we'll get your guys' opinions because they're they're unsolved mysteries. So it'd be it's gonna be kind of cool to see what you guys think might have happened or you know transpired with these mysteries. Yeah, let's you guys have any questions? Discussion. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, so uh, the first one is a mysterious man robbed several Pennsylvania banks between the years of 1977 and 1993. Each time he entered the bank without a disguise. Under the assumption of a customer who wanted to open up a business card, then proceeded to shoot out the security cameras, hold the occupants of the bank hostage, and then demand the tellers to give him all the money in the vault. It seems at this point, he may never be identified. Huh. That's it. Whoa. Interesting. I think you'd have to be, I think you have to be pretty good at your job to do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I cuz I feel like with security cameras, the amount of people that are in banks that, you know, it's kind of easy to get caught, especially if you're it said that it was several banks in Pennsylvania. But it was over the span of almost 20 years that he did this. That's a uh, it's an, also an interesting time for like law enforcement. It's still evolving, like into what we consider like modern law enforcement today. So like, I, I feel like, because you know they think the seventies and eighties, that's like the golden age of like serial killers because mm -hmm. they'll get away with stuff like that. So it doesn't really shock me that you know as long as he kept moving from town to town and stuff like that. It, I mean, you know, I don't know how fast the the word of mouth or the news traveled to actually be like, hey be you know extra security or be alert you know kind of thing still you know seems like a time where you can still get away with that right and i i know there's only a couple lines but i wonder what the the camera footage was like is there any features that we can recognize a height was it consistent do we know that it's the the same guy every time and so that's that's a good question is that with these security cameras, was it something where a tape was actually being run? Mm -hmm. uh, was it something that it really, well, there was no tapes involved. It was just someone behind, like, it was just like a live feed, no recordings yeah. or anything. So maybe they didn't have, you know, the actual tapes to like get this information. But you think if, again, it, there's not much, but these couple of sentences and everything, um, like what time of the day was it right when the mm -hmm. bank opened was it when it was ending like what what were the what was his pattern. or hers yeah what, what what was his pattern i guess and it doesn't really say but yeah a span of 20 years and kind of like what uh clark was saying too is that technology mm -hmm. the word of, it was really just word of mouth and telephone calls so if he does a bank robber and then travels 50, 60 miles to the other end of the state or however big the state is mm -hmm. and then commits one there and then goes to a really small town and like just hits all these rinky dinky banks and you know people aren't talking with each other I think it'd be kind of easy to get away with especially if he was decent at it and he had like a system so hmm. I'm also curious about the weapon that he was using you said some shots were fired uh, yeah, then he proceeded to shoot out the security cameras. Hmm. And I'm not the most know. fluent in guns and weapons, but I wonder oh. if there was like some, you know, don't, don't shells start this. or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, mind you. 
<laughs> well, see, I, I would go for a 410, <laughs> like, uh, pistol caliber, you know, get a good scatter shot going on. Because, I uh-huh. mean, who's going to, who's going to, like, get a camera every single time, every single shot before you get right? made? You got to have something scatter. Then why not just bring a shotgun? A 410, I mean, you get, you get uh, some good scatter with that. But what 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 is what's more, I guess, threatening, a pistol oh. or a shotgun? I mean, the shotgun itself would be more threatening, but also you got to walk into the bank with it. Like it's yeah. very noticeable, unless you're, you know, like wearing a trench coat and stuff like that. Like you got to cover it up. Like it's kind of like, noticeable if you get out of your car, you know, unless he parked like right in front of the doors of the bank mm-hmm. and just like did a get in, get out type deal. Okay, I'm gonna go to my bank tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna wear. A, I'm gonna wait, wear wait, 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 wait! Wanna wear a trench coat? I'm not gonna be armed. I'm not gonna do anything silly. I'm just gonna walk in with a big trench coat and see mm-hmm. what they do. Yeah, do you think people? <laughs> do you think people would take it as a joke, or do you think people would start getting freaked, I don't think freaked so, out? No. <laughs> um, I mean, if I was someone at a bank, I would definitely be wondering what's under the trench coat, mm-hmm. and and That's nobody right. wears trench coats anymore. <laughs> Except, especially, except for school shooters especially if you had like a uh like a winter hat on top of your head like kind of rolled up like ready to go but like oh no 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 I, this is, i'm just cold right now <laughs> but oh and i have someone drive me up to the doors real fast and i get out and then they oh, go away goodness. really fast you run in right to the teller i gotta open up the bank <laughs> i need a hundred dollars fast here's my here's my card and my id uh i, I oh wonder what they God. would do <laughs> wait so clark you've you've said that you've uh you have some buddies or you know someone in law enforcement right mm-hmm. yeah could you ask them what they would do in that sort of situation where someone ran in real quick <laughs> uh had a trench coat and a hat like wait if if they were there would they would they like like you know police uh, spidey senses be tingling or would they mm. be thinking like oh okay this is a joke or would they be like this is not a funny joke yeah they probably wouldn't take take it as too humorous <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with clark on that we're, we're getting into bad territory there was okay I'll, I'll give you i'll give you an example not even a bank i was checking out a walgreens like i don't know last week or something and there's like a little atm machine by the counter and uh the you know the brinks guys come in and it was just one guy but you know they're armed and have their jackets on and mm-hmm. he was uh ch- he was swap putting the cash he was like you know how they change the cash out so he um he was putting cash into it and uh he was he just kept looking i was right at the register and i was just you know getting my stuff he came in i was there already but he kept eyeballing right. me it was really weird <laughs> <laughs> were you wearing a trench coat <laughs> no <laughs> i was wearing yoga pants <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> yeah maybe that's right it was. <laughs> and your uggs it's <laughs> 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 a basic bitch <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny he had his, he had his uh was it pumpkin spice latte with him? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Is, is that funny? That's how I actually dress. And pumpkin spice lattes are like really good. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I would so, go if you don't worry. Okay. All right. Cool. Hey, you guys are going to have to hang out with me at some point. So get used to it. We're, I'm just going to be 10 to 15 feet behind you. I don't know that guy. <laughs> So what what do you guys think? Do you guys think that he this robber did a couple of banks in in this state and then took off to a different state, or do you think they just kind of like were like, hey, I'm I'm done doing bank robbers, or do you think it's something where he could have gotten caught for a different crime and then he got put in jail? Hmm. Mm, he might have just got might have That's got too a good old. Question. For it. Yeah. Maybe they passed away. Yeah. True. In twenty True. years almost, like he could have just. Mm-hmm. I can't, you know, he could have been, let's, let's just assume he started in his like late twenties. Cause I don't see someone in like their early twenties being like, I'm going to be a bank robber. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. like something to start out of desperation. 
So I'm gonna say yeah. this person's like at least thirty. So by the time he's done, he's in his fifties. Maybe he just like physically didn't want to risk it anymore, or he got mm-hmm. enough money to where he could kind of like be like, "Hey, I can I can probably chill out now." Yeah. Uh, it reminds I, me of like those movies like Hell or High Water or Heat. Uh, ooh, yeah. I mean, I mean, first off, if I had like two successful bank heists under my belt and I didn't get blue dyed or caught or anything. Man, I would, I would, I would hang up my hat. I'd be like, I, I, I did that. You know, that, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> I, I honestly, I thought you were going to say the completely opposite and be like, yep. I am good at this. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that thought would, but, but still, I'm the kind of person where I, you know, if if, if, if somebody asked me, you know, you want to double your money or you want to walk away right now, I would be like, I'm going to walk away right now. I went into this with nothing. I mm-hmm. I just made some money. I'm going. I'm not I'm not risking losing it. So kind of like the movie Heat where they start getting like no shit heat on them and they're in uh I think it's uh not Robert De Niro. It's yeah, it is Robert De Niro. Yeah. He asks if uh they want to like just walk right now and they're like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's 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 go for it." You would <laughs> yeah. go for it? Or you wouldn't uh, or you Oh, wouldn't no, go no, no. For it? Wait, wait, wait. Ooh, in that particular scenario, ooh, that's a good question. Because okay, so they 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 were doing all the diamond and all of that stuff, so it was all small time. That was technically their biggest heist, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I think I want to say yeah. The the one that the, they got they did at the end was their biggest one. Yeah, so I don't know if I would I don't know if I'd had the mindset yet. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think the but I think that's the reason why was that like he he had said like yeah they're they're on to us or something like that where like hey we can walk away right now no risk part like we we don't have to do this but they're all like let's do it and I think it was all or nothing they all had to be in on it or they all had to like it was all like a yes from everyone or they weren't gonna do it yeah baby you mama had a, was on Val Kilmer's ass I was gonna say Val like, Kilmer. I'm going yeah, he was a he was a gambling man. Yeah. Well, that's also the smartest thing that our Pennsylvania criminal here did is that he did it by himself with no accomplices because that's the easiest way yeah. to get caught. Yeah. That is true. Oh, that is true. Hey, you know, I that wonder if he had a getaway car. Maybe did did he have an extra driver to drive him around? What if he did this all on foot? You know, like he didn't know. have a car. Ooh, he Ubered. Well, <laughs> maybe not back then. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> okay, so Seth, tomorrow you're gonna Uber with a trench coat and ski mask. <laughs> I'll go to the First National Bank, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that reminds me of the uh I think it's Jackass two or three, where they get one of the guys to dress up like a uh like a Middle Eastern guy, and then they yeah. they <laughs> uh jokes and stuff. They, yeah, they like they rent a cab or whatever, but the cab driver was in on it the entire time, and they make him like get a a cab to the airport, and he keeps saying like very risky things. Oh my god! <clears throat> this reminds me of that. Man, I just want to watch a bank heist movie. Remember Bandits with the the guy from that movie, The Kid. Bruce Willis. Willis. Yeah, yeah, Bruce so, Willis. Well, I was literally yeah. sitting here thinking, out of all the Bruce Willis movies, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the kid. Well, why not like Die Hard? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know the anyway. guy. Anyway, he's the kid. <laughs> <laughs> but he was in a really good movie with uh, Billy Bob Thornton called Bandits. It was a good twist at the end. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. That's when he actually still had like a little bit of hair left, right? Uh, yeah, I think he did have hair in that movie. Yeah, yeah. It's really watched. It's really weird to watch like eighties, nineties stuff with Bruce Willis when he had hair. <laughs> well, he had uh, then... or Steve Martin with black hair. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. But uh, Bruce Willis had hair in uh, Surrogates, but it was CG, I think. Yes, that's oh, right. That's so Speaking of Bruce Willis, do you guys know what's going on with him lately? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, that's sad. Actually, my wife and I were talking about it earlier because uh, I'm trying to think of what movie it was on. There, uh, there was a Bruce Willis movie on TV earlier, and my wife mentioned it. She's like, oh, so sad. His yeah. last one was like a year ago, wasn't it? He's doing a lot of like B-type movies, yeah. like 
Amazon, Hulu type. Like they're not like super big, but he's oh, doing like bad. some small. Yeah, yeah. Well, the same thing is happening to Thor. What? Yeah, really? Chris Chris Hemsworth. Uh huh. Yeah, he's he's uh, having a cognitive issue. Well, he he found the two worst markers you could ever have for, uh, for predicting Alzheimer's. Oh, and, uh, no. yeah, so he he's like stepped away from the whole movie industry for a while. Huh. But that's brothers have it too. Who? Well, he's got two brothers, Luke and Liam. So I wonder oh. if the other course, I wonder if they showed the same genetic. Oh, uh, interesting. Oh. Unless it's like skips some generations and oh, that would be... Yeah, that's a that's a rough one. That's a rough mm-hmm. disease. And it's it's sad because there there really there is nothing you can do about it. Like you can't like I think there's ways that you can like help like reduce and like you know maybe offset it a little bit. But yeah. there's no there's no there's no cure for this. And I think that's I think that's probably has to be one of the hardest things. Now shit this this just became really heavy. <laughs> well i mean hey if you're gonna have if you if you're first off he like found markers that could predict it and mm-hmm. he's got that marvel money so i mean if anyone's in a good boat it's chris hemsworth i mean he he's he has the luxury of like basically vacationing the rest of his life with his family and course correcting so it's not as bad when he's older but i don't know how i don't know the margins that they can fudge it well that kind of reminds me of um the Michael J. Fox Foundation, where he's been, uh, what he has, uh, yes, Parkinson's, right? Parkinson's, yes, yep. And he, uh, he has a huge foundation. I think it's called the Fox Foundation, where they he like just dedicates all his time and energy to that. I so. would hate to be his downstairs neighbor. All that <laughs> shuffling. Oh my god! I, I, <laughs> or, or if he hands you a coke. Oh. <laughs> this okay everyone's oh going uh, <laughs> but if you watch uh curb your enthusiasm season 12 that's literally the joke and he's in on it and he so he <laughs> he gives okay. larry a, a coke and larry is like i'm all right now and then he's like come on what's wrong you're not going to be it's hospital it's hospitality i'm giving you the coke and he's like fine so he opens it and it sprays all over him and it's it's hilarious and he's downstairs below michael j fox's apartment and uh he's just like making all these shaking noises the whole night (laughs) at least he has a sense of humor about it then oh he does yeah good so i wasn't being mean (laughs) I was like, damn, Seth. <laughs> but going on to uh, number two, because I think we've, I think we're, we chalked up that first one. Um, uh, Don Decker. So Don Decker was a teenager in 1983 who was serving a prison sentence for, uh, for receiving stolen property, which I think is a weird crime, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, he allowed, he was allowed to leave for a week to attend his grandfather's funeral. When oddly though, ran rain began to fall sporadically from the ceiling above the phenomena occurred consistently for a few weeks causing a priest to be called for an exorcism once he returned but don could never explain the mysterious rainfall as nothing as anything but his grandfather's spirit weird huh. yeah to wait where where was it raining in his like in his prison cell or in his like, yeah in, in his jail, jail cell yep and what year was this happening in uh it doesn't give a year oh no it does uh 1983 hmm. insane does the oh. year have something to do with it well no i just you know sometimes when you think about it, you see stuff written papers and things like that it can be embellished if it was something from like the 1920s you know i'd be a little more skeptical than something more recent but I'd almost believe something more from the 1920s than now. But I kind of figured it was newer because uh, receiving stolen property is like kind of a newer crime. <laughs> I see. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. I think if you don't know that it's stolen, but you still receive it, is this is that still technically like receiving stolen property, and then you could get jail time? Yeah, I, don't I hope know. not. That's Weird. like half of Facebook Marketplace. 
<laughs> See, and that's that's what you know what? Let me look that up real quick. I'm I'm probably gonna get flagged right now for this. And is that the same like in the official crime like theft by receiving? I think that's why they I call it so. because you know it's stolen like at that point. Weird. Yeah. It's, I feel like that's like a rule that was made for I don't know, people that uh cut up car parts and then have like a black market thing going on i feel yeah, like you have mm-hmm. to know you're like you know you're dealing with someone yeah. who's not on the yeah. up and up yeah i hope your i hope i hope your new transmission isn't isn't stolen <laughs> Yeah, actually, there's a there's a site that I was going to order that clutch off, but it seemed a little a little too good to be true. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's like four hundred dollars cheaper. That's kind of scary. Ah, hmm. interesting. And the there was, a was guy... it Wish? Was it Wish dot com? <laughs> 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 I'm just picturing Clark shopping for his really nice car on Wish. Yeah. He's like, hmm, I could be ordering <laughs> performance car parts off of Wish. <laughs> <laughs> now that would make a great YouTube channel. Uh, performance sports cars with wish parts mm-hmm. and then you just film what happens there are people that do that there's a there's a guy i've seen who actually they like go online and they buy like the cheapest like turbocharger or cheapest like super oh cheap. no way and they'll put it on like one of their cars and everything and like see if it works okay that's pretty funny i'd yeah. watch that i don't know anything about cars but i'd watch that Alex is busy right now. He's doing some deep, deep research. Mm. Really got into theft by receiving here. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, I, I, I had a very, I had a somewhat kind of encounter like this. Uh, I was in the Lowe's parking lot, and a guy was, uh, "Hey, do you want some speakers?" I was like, "Are you First giving of all, them good to morning. me?" <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, no. I just remember saying something like, "Are you giving them to me?" He's like, "Get out of here, man!" No, I'm selling them. He was like, do you want them or not? And I'm like, no, I don't want them. I don't know you. What are you talking about? <laughs> like speakers, like what kind of speaker? Like there's so many questions. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. Oh, God. I'm stuck on the raining from the ceiling. I, I can't get that out of my head. What? Water was just falling. So faulty pipes? Yeah, this is just bad plumbing and that's an old <laughs> aging prison. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of prisons and spooky stuff, do you guys think there are any haunted prisons out there? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> like just out in America in general or in Pennsylvania? Yeah. But... Well, well, okay. Um, uh, well, while Alcatraz. We're talking about Pennsylvania, uh, well, Alcatraz mm-hmm. yeah. but in Pennsylvania, um, Eastern State Penitentiary, I've been there. Oh, whoa. what'd you do? No, what didn't it's, it's, <laughs> you don't have to rob a bank <laughs> to go look at it. All you need is your trench coat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's there's what. A, I, uh, there's a Robert Redford movie, it, uh, one that he did in the mid 2000s. It was like his last big one, and it, and it, they actually filmed it here in Tennessee. It was a it was the old Tennessee State Penitentiary or whatever. And it's it's like a historical one now. They don't actually use it anymore. Um, but it was something about uh, the cover of the DVD was like an upside down American flag, and it and it was like about some kind of prison riot that happened. Anyway, Robert Redford was in it, and that's the only thing I remember about my local prison. Hmm. Okay, so I got a little bit of information now. You as the audience member, we are not legal we're not attorneys we're not you know we're just lawyers <laughs> you just don't take this for what it's worth okay we're not telling you this is what the law says you have to look into your own state law <laughs> whatever just, you know what it long story short just you know don't listen to us anyways um we're just, we're just, guys, we're just guys in yoga pants come on <laughs> <laughs> according to a general uh Jeez. Okay, so there's there's a pop up that keeps happening. Uh, give me a second. Uh, according to general receiving stolen property laws, 
it is a crime to accept or purchase any property which you believe or have knowledge, actual knowledge, that it has been obtained through illegal means such as theft. However, receiving stolen property in its own separate crime and thus should not be confused with similar crime acts of theft, robbery, or give me a second that pop up. It, it, it's like a lawyer find a lawyer now pop up mm -hmm. um robbery or extortion depending on the jurisdiction depending on the jurisdiction and the facts involved in a specific case receiving sold property may be charged as either a felony or misdemeanor offense rational uh okay the pop up keys uh, long story short i think what what happens is is at what point do you know that it's stolen That'll right. come into play. So, huh. yeah. I mean, that's kind of fair. Like, yeah. I think. I, I think. I. I think that's that's what like the judge will look at and like what your defense or whatever is is going to need to prove that there's like you didn't know. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if if some guy is like sweating and running up to you and be like, Hey, do, do you want I kind of like the speaker guy? Like, do you want these? And then like, you're like, uh, sure. Yeah. But I think they're stolen at that point. You, you kind of know. So I think it's like, all right, that's, you're going to, you're going to have to be like, Oh no. Like I knew this guy. He, you know, he, he said he made them himself. Like, you're, yeah, <laughs> they're handmade <But> speakers. <laughs> but see, now you said you think they're stolen. You don't know for sure. So I think you may have a way out here. See that's that's true, but you gotta you gotta have a good defense. Then you gotta you mm -hmm. see it's you gotta persuade the jury. That's that's all it is. Is you just gotta mm -hmm. you gotta persuade a group of people that you you didn't know. I would be so good uh, pleading to the jury. I'd be like, guys, I didn't know. <laughs> I really guys, didn't. Guys, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm like, just perfectly I'm serious, fine guys. speakers. <laughs> just, I, sounds, I'm, I had a bad day. Okay. <laughs> He sounds like he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, moving on past the uh, whole stolen property stuff, because that's not really the whole <laughs> mystery about this whole thing. It's, I, I, it's I, the... I liked your lawyer thing at the beginning. We're not lawyer. I, we should we should put that before when I gave that guy advice mm -hmm. about his green card status. Oh I was my like, god! We oh should no. have like a legal disclaimer. <laughs> don't listen to us I, I was like well you can find a chick over here go on reddit and then, oh I like god how, i like how at the end you're like yeah clark uh alex you, that's right right <laughs> I, I don't know if i should comment uh, that was a, that, that guy that guy was interesting yeah competing yeah, with the devil lot. I still like the two hairy guys in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your mother, mother's balls. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll have a highlight reel. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the whole the whole water coming from the ceiling. Uh, I'm I'm guessing just faulty pipes. It doesn't say mm -hmm. if they, if they checked them out, but. I don't know. It's it, to me, it's it maybe it was hot that summer and there's a lot of perspiration, you know, humidity. I don't know. That, that one's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know. It's because yeah. if it's not pipes, what else do you, what else could it be? And you think that if a pipe broke that the prison would fix it. Uh -huh. I don't know. Unless it would just be hard to locate. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't really know maybe. how easy need to do plumbing in a prison you know everything's you know kind of cemented in <laughs> yeah. true that is true but i you know what I, yes and no i feel like a prison is very well laid out where it's just like that's pretty much it is it's just like concrete rooms and everything and it's like okay if a pipe is going through a couple a couple of prisoners uh rooms they would just move them to a different cell cut up that cut that open and then fix it and then cement it back up i guess it depends the amount of water though is it if it's just going to be a little leak i don't see them just destroying everything and trying to fix it right i see that that that's true too is like all right yeah it's what at what at what point 
is it like all right hey we need to fix this because if it's just like just water like moisture build up at, mm-hmm. at the top of the ceiling and it's not like downpouring rain you know water i don't i don't see a reason to fix it if there's just moisture build up all right we're gonna go on to number three dale he has a weird last name kersturter uh he was a security guard in bradford when he disappeared one night in 1987 Uh, It appeared that he had vanished without a trace. Security cameras revealed a masked intruder uh, present shortly before his disappearance, leading authorities to believe he may have been abducted. That's all that one is. That's all. That that is it. The the see. I will. You know. Let me see if I. I'm going to save the picture of -hmm. this guy, and I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it in the chat. And then you guys tell me why someone would abduct this guy. Because I think I think uh, I think it's important that we all see what he looks like. Oh, did he have any kind of like connections to anything? Business, like money. Mm-hmm. I mean, good, there's a good question. There's reasons to, I guess, you know, someone important, or if he's a politician, or was he connected to someone important? Yeah. Access to something. These are all very good questions. Oh, <laughs> I was expecting a younger fella. See, you say, oh, like you knew the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dale. Yeah, I know Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that would be the only reason why I would know this guy. There's definitely no other connection. And I would, I, I totally had an alibi in 97. I mean, just saying, just saying. <laughs> so he was, was he, well, he disappeared. It was out of his house. Like they saw a masked intruder. Was it security cameras or something? Where does he disappear from? He was a security guard in Bedford when he yes. disappeared one night. So I'm, I'm assuming he was on duty because mm-hmm. it said, that it appeared that he had vanished without a trace. Security cameras revealed a masked intruder present shortly before his disappearance. So unless he had security cameras outside his house, I think he was actually like on duty. Yeah. Somewhere in Bedford when, yeah, this happened. And I'm pretty sure now that listeners can correct me, but Bedford's like a lot of the woods country, Pennsylvania. So he might've, yeah, he, he might've just been wrong place, wrong time, wrong uniform. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brad intruder, whatever the masked intruder wanted, he might have just been collateral in the way, you know. Um, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Let's. I thought you said. I thought you said Bedford. Bradford. My 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 apologies. I know Bradford. Bedford, is, Bedford I know is like the woods. I think. But yeah, that's uh, still. I think he might have just been in the, you know, wrong place, wrong time kind of thing, and. He might have ended up, you know, uh, collateral damage. It looks like Bradford is a, like a, a decent sized city. Yeah. Um, these are all very good and valid, uh, valid points. Like, did he know someone? Was he related to someone of importance? Did he have a gambling problem or something? You know? Barely, I don't know anything. This is the first time I've seen his name. So it's it's a lot of good what ifs. And I wonder if, I wonder if the uh, if these were questions that were asked, you know, because right. I feel like there's there's a lot of times in crimes, almost like the whole Chris Watts thing, where it's like they lead they lead a whole completely different life, mm-hmm. or they it's like oh they would they would never do something like that, and then they do something like that, so. I just want to know what he was. What was he a security guard for? Like, what was he protecting? That's true. That's that's a good question too. Well, let's uh, let's something dig a little. Something else went missing. He was either in on it or like said he was a mm-hmm. casual because of it. Let me. I'm going to unsolved. Let's see here. Unsolved mysteries. Um, I'm going to try to find a little bit more about this. Uh, stupid ads. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so Saturday, September 12th, 1987, began a typical work day for Dale. Dale. Uh, the 50-year-old security guard, and security guard and maintenance man had worked for 27 years at the corner grass work plant, cornering glass work plant in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Um, give me a second. Uh, Pennsylvania, the plant made long glass rods for electrical resistors. That evening, he left his mobile home in Louis, in Lewis Run and drove 10 miles to the plant. His shift at as weekend security guard went from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. However, he arrived there early at 10.30 and relieved guard Art Patterson. He then settled in as the few remaining employees left the plant that night. A quarter of a million dollars worth of plutonium pipe vanished from the plant, and he was never seen. Oh, geez. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That makes me okay. think that he was just in the way. The, yeah. It's, I don't know. Okay. Pound yeah. for pound, plutonium is one of the most precious um, uh materials in the world it is even more expensive than gold in addition it is it's a okay uh after dale had a and a fortune of pipes disappeared from the cornering plant authorities were mystified was he the unwitting victim of a robbery or had he engineered the heist himself Ooh, dale grew up in bradford and except for his years in the air force lived there all his life he had he had been divorced for 10 years and his teenage son al still lived with him four of his five daughters also lived in pennsylvania his daughter penny uh, described him as a very compassionate and honest person he liked to have fun and spend time outdoors his mother evelyn said that he was a very faithful he was very faithful to everyone he hated to lie and never believed in doing it Al said that he was a great father and that there wasn't a kid in the world who wouldn't have wanted him as a dad. Um, let's see here. Personal manager C. Dale Perry described Dale as a marginal employee. According to Perry, he was a slow worker and they had some problems with him occasionally. However, Perry also noted that Dale, at the risk of his own life, probably saved half of a half a dozen lives on hundreds of thousands of dollars of property value. Jeez. Several years prior to Dale's disappearance, a forklift accident rolled underneath a, a steam of hot molten glass. The glass started pouring down into the propane tanks in the back of the forklift. Dale immediately jumped onto the forklift and drove it out from underneath the hot steaming uh, stream of glass. Harry says that uh, you can look at one side of Dale and see where it would have made sense that he would have been involved in the theft, but then you can look at the other side of Dale and see that it would have been it would have not made sense for him to be involved. Yeah. I can keep reading if you guys want. This is pretty lengthy. It I'm surprised that uh, like that last sentence that you just said. I'm surprised because they're describing him as a hero, um, just an incredible father, an incredible person, someone that has served. I yeah. I'm wondering why he would be. I don't know. That's yeah, it's yeah, it it is because it it's like like his uh his manager said in, in in one token you can see that if he was you know a slow worker not really you know doesn't really contribute to the company, um maybe has a bad attitude. Okay, right. like I can maybe like you know he's he doesn't make the most money like we make precious material let's uh okay i can see him maybe robbing the place but then you see how he um jumped on the forklift mm -hmm. and got that pouring the pouring glass out of the the way and everything so it's yeah you can see it both ways but wouldn't that make for even like more of a reason for someone not to think that you you'd done it it's like oh yeah Yeah, looking more and more like any any had a kid or still. anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of connections. And, I don't see him being maybe helping, but being the mastermind behind this, I don't think so. 
it yeah and i think because he said that like his his uh his kids seemed to really like him and said mm-hmm. that he was a great dad so i don't see someone like that just uprooting and like getting away and just being like ah now i'm just gonna start a whole new life with all this all this cash at so. 50 I, I don't know Mm. Yeah. Interesting story, though. Mm-hmm. All right. We will go on to the next one, which is number, I think we're on number four or five. Four, five. I believe. Four. Yeah, four. 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 Uh, the Route 22 Killer. Wait, did I skip one? I think I might have skipped one. Went over Dale. Oh, I my my apologies. We skipped one. Cindy Song. Oh, um, see, that's familiar. It, it. I think this is very. This is a very typical. Not a very typical story, but it sounds very familiar. So Cindy uh-huh. was last seen in two thousand one when she was attending a Halloween party at Penn State University, where she was a senior. She disappeared after two friends dropped her off at her apartment late that night bringing with her only her purse. A woman who matched her description was seen being forced into a car in Philadelphia a few days later. Uh, Investigations have focused on finding the man who authorities believe abducted her. That's it. Did did the woman match the description of her? Yeah, a woman who matched her description was uh, seen being forced into a car in Philadelphia a few days later. I gotcha, I gotcha. Mm. Sounds like a trafficking case. Human trafficking. I have heard of this one before, too. I think I've seen Mm a report thing on it, whether it be a YouTube thing or I don't think it was a I don't think it was a spot on any kind of like unsolved mysteries or something, because this is Mm -hmm. fairly recent, right? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I, that's as much as I I I hear of the the lady that matched her description a few days later, but I'm very skeptical of those sightings. Um, completely anecdotal, but I've never really trusted those, and more often than than not, in my opinion, they're not related to the person that's missing. So, I don't know. Yeah, a case of a uh, mistaken identity. But uh, mm-hmm. as like a uh, as an investigator, I feel like you have to uh, right. investigate yeah. every every avenue, and you have to take mm-hmm. every. Well, see, I think that's the hard thing too is like when tips or like I've seen mm-hmm. this person. It, it, you, I feel like you can't leave any stone unturned. unturned. Yeah. So you you kind of have to be like, all right, well, let's go to Philadelphia now, I guess, and let's mm-hmm. uh, let's let's see what might be over there because it's the it's the what if, and I feel like if I as a family member um, had someone disappear, and then you know a tip came in like, oh, they're a few states over, or the someone that matched that description is a few states over, I would I'd be like, well, did you go and like mm-hmm. look for them i'd be i think i'd be pretty upset to find out the investigators like ah eh, well they didn't sound sincere when they were right. doing it like yeah. so i feel like you yeah, owe it to them but then again i don't know i think again clark maybe you 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 your friend has talked to you about this is just like what is the what is the i guess the criteria or what is the procedures for like following a tip like does it do they follow every single one? Is it something where it's like, okay, that person was obviously, it's almost like the old mingle people when we were mm-hmm. talking with them and they're like, Hey, do you have a scary story? And they're like, Oh y- yeah. Like this, uh, this one time it's like, okay, this, uh, this isn't, this isn't. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. So. I mean, generally, yeah, they're going to keep a file on every tip, but they're not going to take some of them seriously. So, but it's, you know, and and even they'll say that you know sometimes it's damaging to a case if you have you know kind of useless information being thrown in, but mm-hmm. but generally, I mean, that's just what detectives are kind of used to at this point. So they they yeah. kind of move forward through. Oh, that'd be such a tough job being a right? detective. Just going I think be... through what is credible and what is probably a dead end, or mistaken someone for a missing person or 
Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, it's, it's also kind of funny because it's what what we're doing here is theorizing, and that's like the mm-hmm. hard detective to not do. Is like that's kind of their thing is you can't follow a theory. You have to follow clues and trail. Like you have to follow facts. You can't you can't come to a conclusion and then try to make it work. You yeah. have to follow the evidence and then that'll lead you to the conclusion. So <laughs> it's a, kind of that would be a terrible detective then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, do you say, why do you say that, sir? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly. I have an assumption, and it, and it just makes sense, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're one of these, like, okay, they had to have, they had to have gone this direction. We're going this direction. I don't thing. know if anything ever, if anything ever made me feel like it was this hunch or whatever. I would just like be all in i i I feel like that now now that being said i i do agree with you the this kind of work would be awful like murders and and just horrible things that you have to drudge through all the time but if there was such a thing as the x-files i know this sounds silly but if there was some kind of mysterious case department Mm -hmm. in some some branch of the government that would be kind of dope i'm not gonna lie you know there is. I know. Yeah. I just I don't know what they actually call it though. What if it is called the X Files? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> like, They're what? like fans. They're also fans of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scully today. No, I'm Scully today. <laughs> Pretty much. I wonder if you can get that. Uh, I want to believe poster somewhere. It's got to be out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is. There has to be. Yeah, that is such a classic. Like classic thing from the show they you know, you know what uh, yeah i, I want I'm, it all right i want it to... framed though I, i'll feel like a teenager. i i have this weird thing where if i get just posters i feel like a teenager so i have to frame them then it's official yes adult. <laughs> yes if it's just paper on the wall it's not official <laughs> i want to oh right there first thing on i typed in i want i want to be and then it says, I want to believe poster right no in eBay. Way. I'm going to try yeah. it. Uh, for, ooh, brand new, it can be $8 or $80. I'm sure it depends on the size that you get. Yeah. Maybe the material as well, if it's just paper or I something like a little bo- bit more premium. Yeah. Yeah. I do like just the retro look of that poster. Such an OG UFO. Now I'm getting a bunch of X Files posters too. I'm not gonna lie; I've been binging the X Files the past like two weeks at night. <laughs> it's it's good. It is. All right. Well, we'll we'll move on to that was number four. We're gonna move on to number five. Wrote uh, twenty two killer. Um. So David Harley didn't expect a nighttime run to the store to buy donuts to be the last thing he ever did but thanks to an unidentified man it was as he was leaving the store a white car sideswiped his when he exited his vehicle to exchange uh, insurance information the other driver shot him multiple times before driving away leaving david seriously injured he managed to return home but died in the hospital hours later so we got a hit and run he went home now- first and then to the emergency services yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, and I, I don't know if this was one of those things where it's like, I've seen this happen before, where it's like, mm-hmm. oh no, I'm, I'm good, I'm fine. Like when people break their arm initially, it's like, oh, yeah. it, it doesn't hurt, and it's, I think it's the shock. Mm-hmm. They're, they're in shock, um, and they think they're okay, but then it's just like it just kind of hits you. So, but it, mm-hmm. it, he, 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 he did die in the hospital. So I, I, maybe it was one of these things where it's like he didn't know how bad it actually was like mm-hmm. oh i i got shot and then it's like i need i need to get i mean I, okay yeah i don't understand why he just wouldn't go to the hospital right, right away but yeah i don't know he he did not he went home first then went to the hospital how close Here. was he to the donut place like did he there were no witnesses on the like, i think what? there i think there was witnesses but it's just one of those things where maybe it happened so fast, and because mm-hmm. they say 
a white car sideswiped his. So I'm assuming that there was people watching that gave the description of the vehicle, but the occupant within just was maybe moving so fast or such a fast interaction. And maybe it was, maybe it was one of these things where it was like, they were already on the road and it happened like, you know, hundred mm-hmm. feet down the road where like not a lot of people are just standing and watching, but they saw a white car drive away. Who, who knows? This is actually, I'm kind of interested to see if this, cause it's, uh, it, it says the route, route 22 killer. So I'm wondering if this happened multiple times, right? Mm-hmm. Let me, let me look. It's this unfortunate up. that they weren't able to get a plate or something like that. Something mm-hmm. else to get that car. Well, that person would have to get their car fixed also. So like usually, mm-hmm. usually anytime there's an accident like that, that's how they find people like, you know, hitting runs and stuff. And is they end up finding out the car itself had to get repaired somewhere. So. Uh, no. Oh, wow. This is actually like a, a database type thing. Three gunshot wounds, one to the shoulder, one to the chest, and one to the back. That's where that's where he got hit. Oh, whoa. In it was that the intersection. Order? Uh, I don't know if it was in that order, but those were the three spots that he had oh, been I hit. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Uh, it was at the intersection of Hawthorne Drive and PA Route 22, westbound, just beyond the township shop and shop and, oh, geez, shop and save. So like, like kind of like what I was saying, it's, it seems like he was exiting the store and it happened a little bit down the road. So no one probably got a positive identification on the person. It was a 8990 champagne gold Honda Perlude. Suspect was dubbed the PA Route 22 killer by media. Okay, so it wasn't something that it was like a serial murders or anything like that. It was just... One I guess it, yeah, yeah. Huh. Hmm. I wonder why this one in particular was singled out. I feel like this must happen, if not, you know, often, but it must happen. Yeah, I don't I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it was uh I mean I like I know the media likes to put names mm-hmm. to like things like this, especially like criminals and Oh, what was an what was what's been another one where they like they ah oh, the night stalker oh yeah yeah like that was a the a, a name dubbed by the media and everything so they the media i think likes to give things like this a name something to like draw in their attention mm-hmm. so yeah they gotta market it yep all right number six we got the uh kex Kecksburg UFO incident. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've 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 heard of this one or I've seen um TV shows covering this one, but whether or not you believe in the existence of aliens in outer space, the the Kecksburg incident is undoubtedly strange. On a quiet December night in 1965, millions of people in Canada and across six US states witnessed what happened to be a meteor blazing across the sky, dropping metallic debris, causing brush fires, and even resulting in a sonic boom. Oh, wow. Residents of Kecksburg reported finding an acorn-shaped object about the size of a small car in the woods that was discovered in what appeared to be hieroglyphics covered in what seemed to be hieroglyphics. The United States military roped off the area. It took the object. Uh, the official incident was a it was described as a meteor landing. Interesting. It was the size of a small car, and it made mm-hmm. that much of damage and sound. That's interesting. Yeah. It's weird that there's so many um, descriptions of UFOs with pictographs on them. Mm-hmm. That's that, See, that's always stood out to me. I. I like why would well look at all right well they said the you like the the military and everything well, look at how we put stuff on the outside of ours true true no i'm not saying to discredit it i just find it interesting like uh i think okay are you aware of the black knight uh yes oh <laughs> yeah that that's a yeah. weird one because it's yeah. on a timetable 
and it's visible and they know when to take pictures of it. That's really weird. And it's a very specific geometric object. And then you have the Phoenix lights. Then you have, what was the one, the, it was over LA and the military shot, like, I mean, thousands of rounds at it. Yeah. And, and the battle, it, yeah, the battle, battle of Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. There, there are some UFO sightings that are just flat out bizarre. And I don't know, like it's um, like the recently NASA, I think it was like two days ago or a day ago, NASA released um, that there's a lot of objects that are coming into the atmosphere that don't look like they don't follow like trajectories of meteorites and that kind of thing. And they released that video. And it's really weird that the government is just like all of the sudden mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're going to talk about UFOs and, and, and this kind of stuff and release footage. I don't know if it's a psyop. I don't know if it's uh, Project Blue Beam or whatever, but uh, it's very strange. And uh, I, well, I, you know, my take on it is that what if uh, what if it's all like not real? Like, what if none of it? Not not the UFOs, but what if outside our planet is so bizarre? We have a very loose understanding of it, and so all the stuff we consume in schools and what space looks like and their diagrams and we and and movies and we have this idea of what space and planets look like but it's really just like what if it's just like an ocean and every now and then something pops into our planetary bubble and like lands and it makes no sense to us i feel like that's more likely it hmm. it reminds me of the uh twilight zone episode where they're 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 trying to go to the outer edge of space and they they make it and what they see is a giant eyeball looking down at them yeah and it, it's just like we are in this petri dish of, of it, it, but like that is space though like if you've ever watched or seen um diagrams of like these stars like our sun that are like trillions and trillions of times bigger than our actual sun and then it's like, well, compare that to the Earth, where the Earth is just a tiny little dot to the sun. It's we are just like, it it hurts my brain. Mm -hmm. The scale to think is of, just it's hard to reason with. Yeah, and like and comprehend like how big and vast the universe in space really is. Yeah, I don't think we know anything that's going on. Mm -hmm. I, that's my hunch. It's like whenever something. Do, doesn't fit our understanding it we get like stories like this whether it be bigfoot or wendigoons or whatever uh like uh did you call it a window yeah i did i did Why did you? Not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i totally I I've, I've swapped it out for the popular youtube channel but no like any <laughs> any bizarre sighting of anything i feel like there's all this stuff going on and every now and then it pops into our uh i don't know visual field and we're just like what huh and then and then they tell other people and they just sound crazy i think that see that that's to me that would be the hardest thing seeing a ufo is knowing what you saw knowing that like what you saw was not of anything that you like like for instance when orbs are like doing these crazy maneuvers or if you're on a plane and you see something and it's just like, I know what I saw. And then to have people be like, yeah, but it could have been. It's like, no, this is it. I know, like, I'm not crazy. And I think that happens. And I think that's why people don't talk about it a lot, too. Have you seen those new the, games? Um, mm -hmm. So go okay. ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Oh, um, when you say that people afterwards just don't want to share uh, anymore, that reminds me of, goodness, I can't remember the name of the clown now. Uh, it was in the UK. Um, I think I talked about that with you, Clark. Um, that weird humanoid being that uh, met up with two kids in the UK and uh, afterwards they were talking to their parents about it and eventually as they grew up um, I think the the guy just completely refused to talk about this encounter and just try to completely distance himself from that event Wait, what? what is this? I've never heard of um, this. It's like, it, it was like a being, yeah, but with like two legs and two arms, so humanoid-ish. And it was speaking to them without moving its mouth, and it resembled a clown of sorts with like that colors and shapes. Um, 
uh, I think at some point it was talking through a megaphone or something like that. And it tried to maybe amuse the kids by eating something and uh, having it pop out through his quote unquote eye socket or mouse or ears or something like that. How, how do I find this? Um, I can't remember the name. Uh, Whenever like you the... figure it out, please drop uh -huh. that in chat. I want to look at that. I yeah, will. I insane. definitely will. I believe it was in the UK. I'm I'm pretty confident it was in the UK, but let me see if I can find it. So there okay, this reminds me of all right, there are these games they're making now. Um and it, this goes with what she said, this goes with our alien talk. Um they're making okay, so you know, Alex, we talked like in our first encounter about 2D versus 3D uh, dimensional beings and all that kind of stuff. I like how you call it our first encounter. <laughs> it was our first encounter. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the so, of like for instance, if if a if a two dimensional being was in a in a in a in a uh, box and it, and it was or like a drawn box that we you know view as two D, it would feel safe. It's like okay, I'm in this closed square, nothing can get in. But w since we understand and are in the depth of you know the dimension of depth we can stick our finger in the box but to it it would be like all of a sudden this cross section our finger a cross section of a finger would just appear in its box and it would freak it out so there are these guys that are making these new games with like math and and physics and they're they've figured out how to illustrate that in the three-dimensional realm with uh four-dimensional and fifth dimensional entities and you can see part of them in our world, but not all of them. In the higher dimensions, you can see them to completion. But so you go into a cube, like a room, and lock the door, and you feel safe. But in the fourth and fifth dimension, the beings that live in those dimensions all of a sudden pop in to your room. Because it's kind of like a Minecraft survival game. And then you're just like in this box, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm safe for the night or whatever. And then all of a sudden, there's this creature in the box with you. And you don't know how it got in there. That that's the same kind of analogy as mm -hmm. the two dimensional character in a square thinking it's safe, and we just pop in with our finger because we understand depth. And so they've accurately like emulated this in these new games that are about to come out, and I want to play them so bad. But it's so super freaky. I wonder if I wonder if you were to grab onto. Or some like you know what I mean, like grab onto this fourth dimension object if you could get pulled into it in a sense. Like all right, let's like all right, you have this you have that 2D box where someone's in it and we stick our hand in the box. Now if that object were to grab our hand, because theoretically it should still be able to. True, right? true. Because technically in a like I, there's a little bit of cheating in this analogy because if you were to take the two dimensional object, there's there's literally no depth to a true dimensional or two dimensional object. So if you were to pull it into ours, there would have to be some uh, translation of depth mm -hmm. to it. I don't know, but uh, the best representation is like sprites on a on a screen. But uh, the representation we can at least understand that that's what I'm getting at. But what's what's crazy? I, I think you're onto something but i think the the question is would our three-dimensional brains be even able to handle like you know what i mean if but mm -hmm. well no i think the question is are we already in a in a fourth and fifth dimensional space because technically the two-dimensional beings are are in our space they just can't perceive the 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 dimension of depth so well, so we're technically in in it already we just can't perceive it well, I guess like what would, in a sense, what would, what would be a two dimensional object in our world, in our, because if everything is 3D, the only thing that's 2D is like, I guess, paper, like draw, like, like drawing. Well, yeah, but it's still, oh yeah, drawing. I mean, everything mm -hmm. has depth, even graphite on a, on a, on a piece of paper has some bit of depth. Um, like you'd have to go down to like, if string theory is real, then maybe. If, if the if the things that make up the actual atom are 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 to be like strings maybe you can get down to like one to, i don't know that that that's a really good question i don't know that because yeah we we live in a three-dimensional like universe really like it's there's nothing that we 
there's nothing in or around us that's officially two. We can comprehend what two D yeah. is. Yes, like but, with, with with math, like we understand two yes. D with math, but because you can have a zero, like with height, width, and depth, you can have two on height, two on width, and zero on depth. So it, mathematically, it exists, but we can't perceive true two dimensional planes or four or fifth dimensional planes for some okay. reason we're like locked shit. into three shit this is making my brain hurt though but if, if, if okay it's i have a, a question i know it's a silly question but what if someone's vision is only one eye would that qualify as 2d <sighs> no, no because there's i i think because they're still in the 3d world mm. mm -hmm. well there's still depth i mean just because you can't perceive depth perception you're, you're there's still three i mean you can feel like even mm -hmm. if you're completely blind you, you can feel height width and depth okay but what okay what about this though okay because you were saying a two two height two width and then absolute zero is two-dimensional yeah but if it's absolute zero nothing would exist okay, except for those yeah. two dimensions except for height and width I'm just saying mathematically those dimensions would exist in, in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, but like within that two two dimensional universe or world, nothing would exist. Well maybe maybe no maybe no beings do exist. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the beings are the shadow people that people that trip on research chemicals see. I, I have no idea. I'm I'm just saying mathematically we can understand a dimension. I don't know if it's inhabited or not. See, this is this is why my brain hurts. This is why we can't stay on this <laughs> shit for too long. <laughs> we need we need Clark's input. Where are you, Clark? I need yeah. I need I need some logic laid down. Uh, he, I already drank my chamomile tea, so I'm just. <laughs> <not> <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got quiet for a minute because uh, my CB. I, I'm on these new things called CBG. I want to oh. see what that's all about, and I and I kind of started feeling weird for a minute. Now I feel fine. I got quiet. All right. Yeah, I my, I I, honestly, find... I thought. I thought Mm -hmm. go ahead sorry go ahead. I, uh, I was just saying that i did find about the clown that i was describing oh, so if yeah. you want i can read out the little Ooh, introduction yes. and listeners yes. if you want to hear more leave a comment or reach out and we'll make an episode about it hell yeah that was pretty smooth right yeah <laughs> <laughs> here is what the article that i found um says so it's called the send down clown s-a-n-d-o-w-n clown uh, the Sandown Clown was a strange being encountered by two young children vacationing at Lake Cummins Sandown Isle of Wight in the UK. This happened in May of 1973. Following a sound like an ambulance siren, the children wandered across a footbridge over a stream and met a curious, unidentifiable meat being that has been described as, quote, a cross between a clown, a robot, and an alien. End of quote. It was a shy but friendly being and spoke kindly to the children for almost half an hour before they returned to their parents. It seemingly vanished after the encounter and has never been seen again. Although, as I was uh, watching videos about uh, this this uh, event, I do know that I believe the father saw days after uh, lights around following him seemingly. So there's a little bit more to the story if you want. If you want to know more. So, oh, that's. See, to me, because like the 70s and everything, I, I could see someone like, you know, playing a prank on someone, you know, mm -hmm. doing something like that. But the fact that you just said that the, the dad saw lights following him days later makes it seem adds a little bit more weight to it. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange story. Very eerie. Yeah. Huh. huh. All right. Well, yeah, that's actually something. Yeah, oh, we, we might have to make an episode on that. Might have to do like a <laughs> clowns part two. Mm -hmm. um, but moving on, we're going to go on to uh, number seven, which is Oliver the Chimp. Oliver the Chimp. So Oliver's trainers thought that he might be a chimpanzee human hybrid or that he might be the missing link species because he had some bizarre humanoid traits. So his face was flatter than those of his champi uh, champ champies, uh, <laughs> chimpanzee counterparts. He walked upright 
rather than on his knuckles, and he seemed to be more attracted to human women than to other chimpanzees. After his death, however, genetic testing revealed that he was 100% chimpanzee, despite his odd behavior behavioral traits. What, what was his name again? Oliver. Oliver. Yeah, I have seen Looking pictures of the chimp before. It's, it's interesting. He doesn't look like any other chimp that I've ever seen. But the rest of the behavior, is it nature, nurture? How do we explain that? If it in his DNA, he is 100% chimpanzee. Didn't he also live, like, freakishly long? Alex, I don't know if you have information on that. I thought he, like, and, and that's another thing, is for chimpanzees get to a certain age, um, they have to be, like, either, like, reintroduced to the wild or they have to be, like, put in captivity because, like, chimps will go crazy at a certain, I, I can't mm-hmm want to say what age it is because i don't remember for a fact but that's like the cases you hear where like like privately owned chimpanzees just go crazy and like turn on their owners and like is that is that what happened to the clown that um i, I don't have an elegant way to say but he ate uh his owner yeah yeah that's yeah. Chimpanzees when they get to a certain age it's like uh i've heard it described as like all of their like any of their training like any of their like uh just like it's almost like they throw it all out the window. They like just get clean slate wow. and they go completely feral and like go back to their like wild selves. And it's, it's yeah, hard to predict. I so see. I get, man, they're that's sad because they're so, mm. they're so intelligent and somewhat human like in, uh, like emotionally and mm. thinking, you know, it, it's weird to think of them as prisoners, uh, in zoos and whatnot. Um, this is crazy. I, I'm looking up a him. And I keep getting this humanzy human chip hybrid a hundred years ago, like <laughs> pop up. Yeah, there's like several. All right, we photos. need pictures. We need pictures. Come on. Um, <laughs> just cool. just Google humanzy. Yeah. Humanzy. Okay. There's a, uh, there's and, a uh, program that the Soviets tried. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? The Soviets actually tried to like. I mean, I, I don't. It's it's come out that it was an official program. I don't think. I don't know what the official documents or whatever proof they have, but there's rumors oh that the Soviets tried a program to make like they wanted to make basically superhuman soldiers, and so they tried um, basically breeding like chimpanzees with humans, so we they would have just like strong soldiers that would obey, basically. Yeah. And um, apparently, like the the urban legend part of it goes that they were successful to a degree but it wasn't like viable and it wouldn't work like they thought it would so they just let the ones go into the wild and that there's like like groups of chimps out there that are like chimp human hybrids that are in like the russian forest what (laughs) that was under that was under stalin wasn't it uh yeah yeah it would have been Right in that time, like the 40s, 50s, late 40s or early 50s. So st- right around the time Stalin died. So Stalin, Khrushchev era. Yeah. Um, I remember there was a documentary on it. And it there was um, photographs of the women that volunteered for this program. They were basically doing artificial insemination. Wait, so the, they put monkey yeah. into a, a human woman. That's the way I understood it from the documentary I saw. I'll try to find the actual documentary. I mean, I guess that would make a little bit more sense than actually, I don't know. Would it make more sense for it to be like that or to go the other way around? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't know. I th- I mean, there's like all kinds of see. OK, Clark can correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that when. OK, so if the th- who cares how they got here, but when the human tribes split off from like upper Asia and the land bridge and then migrated down to South America and stuff before Columbus came, there was a real, or yeah, it would, no, it was like conquistador Columbus. It was somewhere in there. It was one when the old world met the new world and, and that whole thing happened. But, but I have heard that if those, uh, if the two worlds hadn't have g- generationally commingled once again, um, there would have been, uh, there would eventually have been the inability to breed between those two human species, uh, and I believe, I, I believe, uh, what's his name? Who's that scientist? Uh, he's really rude and interrupts everybody. Bill Nye. Oh, oh um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was talking about this. And 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 that's where I heard this from. He was he was talking about if if the um explorers from you know Europe and stuff never came over several generations down the germline in like South America and North America, and there weren't any you know new genes introduced to kind of remarry those two like uh tr you know lines split off from time that eventually there would have been enough uh, genetic mutations and differences that it there would be no ability to to reproduce uh that, like if several thousand years went by and they, that hadn't happened so you're just, saying that like theoretically we could have like two different kind of like human species on yeah, earth yeah yeah kind of like how there the idea that there were giants that there were a, a, like legitimately elongated skull people that there were there were um there's certain places they've uncovered where there were like really tiny people that walked on uh and i think there's still a tribe that they walk on all fours um and yeah. then there was there was another one what was it oh and if you go even further back there's like uh uh, Neanderthal and then this and then that and and eventually the 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 genes get so different that they can't and I don't know the exact science of it I just know Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about it you would still you would need so much time for that though because even Neanderthal and Homo sapien were able to like they have evidence that they might not necessarily produce like viable children but they did mix like like they okay. were able to kind of like breed to a degree, um, even though they were separate technically, you know, two chains of man. But also, I mean, it makes me think of like H.G. Wells, you know, like the Morlocks and the, you know, if, if given enough time in the future. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Species of human that oh, could man. breed. It could that breed me out as a kid. You know, the ones that live underground versus the ones yeah. that live on the surface. Yeah. Their translucent skin. That always freaked me out as a kid. <laughs> But yeah, I guess if you just uh, uh, two tribes of people, you know, don't get the hanky panky on for really, really long time, <laughs> they just become two different species, I guess. I don't know. But take it up with Neil. Don't take it up with me. I was giving uh, Oliver the human Z and terrifying. Absolutely don't do it. <laughs> it's creepy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like yeah, his like his facial features are a little bit different, yeah. but he, to me, he looks like the like the body type wise, he looks like a normal chimp. Mm -hmm. It just, it, I guess, he just walked on two legs, and could that just be something where, um, he just observed humans doing it, and then he mm -hmm. just took on that trait, yeah, you know, awesome. just start. But he also, yeah. I, I think that's another reason they thought he was like more human like was because like he didn't have the natural bend in his spine, like the inclination to want to hunch, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a that's a weird thing for but then I guess some animals just like I said, observe behavior. You know, he could have just straightened out and gotten used to it. So hey, what if it was a what if it was a deformity? Like, you know, mm -hmm. like okay, yeah. like a deformity in a human would be to have a hunchback, but what if a deformity in a that's, chimp to have a straight back. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, like a maybe like a fused has, spine maybe. or fused. Oh, sorry, Clark. No, you know, you're saying pretty much exactly what I was saying. That's you know something that caused him to be more comfortable walking upright. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Man, this is this is fascinating. Right. I like this. Put talk. into perspective, the son of a gun died in 2012. Jeez. So that's pretty recent. He, he looks quite elderly. It looked like he had a mm -hmm. pretty long life. Uh, yeah, weird. All of this is weird. That's uh, why it's on the show. It's pretty effing weird. That's true. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of that guy that, uh, that I, I think we've talked about this before, but the guy that, uh, j uh, I mean, I, you know, I mean, all right, first off, I want to know everyone's opinion of like all the deep pockets of wealth and research and crazy people out there somewhere on the globe people aren't doing chimera experiments i mean we're we're me we're messing around with like bat oh, viruses absolutely. in labs across the world like there has to be someone legitimately working on chimeras 
Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, that's Just my human opinion. Human hubris has no bound. So absolutely, I believe that. Yeah. I mean, if I had unlimited money, the amount of weird stuff I would do, it, like I, I cannot imagine a world where this isn't going on. For instance, I do think that that whole Chinese thing was a cover up. Uh, the guy that gene spliced those girls to be resistance to the AIDS virus. And 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 they just so happen to have like hyper intelligence as a as a side effect. And 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 AIDS <laughs> yeah, isn't even that's really. A, that's a side it, effect. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, what's cr the, the theory is that this this that's the cover story. The AIDS thing was the cover story, because if you look at certain regions, there's not the percent the AIDS risk over there is like really low. So why mm. would a Chinese scientist spend all this time trying to make these twin girls like resistance to that virus? Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe he was messing with genes that that had to do with intellect or cognitive function and then a side effect was like there happened to be resistance to the AIDS virus so but but that guy like disappeared and that was on the news for a while um and uh I I I guarantee you there's this weird labs weird government funded hush hush labs where they're messing around with like how far they can take like the human template oh yeah 100% I, there's so much stuff probably going on in the background that we just aren't aware of because think about like, all right, think about some of the experiments that went on during world war two and just like how, how atrocious and just like how, how extreme they were and like, but I, and they, they weren't broadcasting that, you know, it's like, they're not, it, it's, I, I feel like there are a lot of experiments that are like, Hey, this is actually pretty messed up what we're doing, but I bet you they're doing it. I bet you they're doing it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you just look at all the experiments they were doing on on prisoners of war on, in mm -hmm. many different countries, like, yeah, yeah, they're doing that stuff. 100%. But I mean, just look at our dog breeds. Yeah. Oh, Most of our dog dogs. breeds are, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're force bred for a look or for intelligence or for a work ethic or, you know, that's, that's all they are. I mean, uh, like I always tell people, I've, I, you know, I've had German Shepherds and Huskies, and I always joke with people that German Shepherds are only, what, like 120 years old? They started breeding them in the 1880s? Yeah. So, I mean, like, before that, German Shepherds did not exist. Like, and it's kind of crazy to, like, wrap your head around that thinking, like, before 1890, there were no German Shepherds. That is world. crazy. And now it's, like, the most popular breed in America and used for, you know, military, law enforcement, all the things they've been applied to. But, you know... Yeah, that's just, uh, because I, yeah. I heard that they're doing they're actually doing that with like with pugs. They're trying to breed them to where their faces are mm -hmm. more elongated, so they're not they don't have any as much health issues as they do. Because mm -hmm. pugs get like they they get the shit end of the stick made fun of all the time. Those two <laughs> two weird eyes and Pug, pugs are like extremely confident though. They will come up to you and be like, "Hey, what are you doing?" What's up? What's going on? And like, I had one I was mowing on like a big mower, and he came up to me and he was like, "Hi, what are you doing? Hi, what? What's going on?" I was like, "Dude, if I had seen you, you would be spaghetti right now." <laughs> and, but his, his owner got him. But it's like they have just ridiculous amounts of confidence. Is it confidence or ignorance? <laughs> Fine line there. <laughs> yeah. It, it is weird though it's it's uh it's like um like if you breed weed you can you'll get like a a cup at like a colorado uh smoking like you know the judges will give you like the 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 bud cup and, w and you'll win an award if you uh if if you breed uh animals you'll you'll have uh you'll have a I don't know, some kind of an award with that or or you'll get to prance them around a stadium and they'll be like, look at the tail. Oh, those are nice white teeth or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the second you start breeding humans, it's eugenics. It's crazy. It's a fine yeah. line there, too. I, I think it, it comes down to. Well, all right. So, like, I, th I think that's why you have like vegetarians, too, and everything. So it's like the like it's you're you're dealing when you when we talk about like humans and everything like that like all right you're gonna 
you're going to mess with, uh, a, you know, chromosomes or like a DNA strand, right? But then you're going to turn that into a human. That human still has consciousness and it still has a life. And that's, I think that's when it comes down. Cause like you have animal rights activists who, you know, like when we talk about just like, you know, eating meat and everything like that, like t still technically animals have a consciousness and they like animals, you know, can feel pain and everything like that. So I think that's, I think that's why people have an issue with it is like, I think people can take a step back and be like, well, shit, what if that was me? What if they were like true just trying to put extra limbs on my body and I was just in like constant pain? So I, think, I, I no, go ahead. Go sorry. Ahead. Sorry. No, I interrupted. I was going to say, I think that, I think that's just what most people can, can do is like, all right, because we can all sit here and like, all right, what if we had, what if we, you know, some scientist was doing experiments on us? How, how would that make us all feel? Like, I know personally, like I would fucking hate that. I'd hate to be like stuck in a, in a lab room you know, getting poked it and prodded with needles and like chemicals just to see how long I could live with four extra arms. Like what kind of life is that? So oh, I think that's ab absolutely. What, absolutely. And I think, no, I'm not saying that. But I mean, like, the, but that, that I think, though, like it's it's weird because, again, it could it could be like a medical advancement in an out like a like a huge achievement. Like, holy shit, we can grow extra arms on people. So if someone were to lose one you can do this and then you can have your arm back or your leg back, or you like, you can have your, a, an extra eye or, you know, like it just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fine line. And I think people are still trying to figure out like, okay, at what point it's, I think it's like with the, the guy who said he could, he could successfully remove a head from one person and put it on another body. It's oh. like, it's one of those That's things where it's up. like, it, it is, but it's like, imagine if that could be done though. It's like, that would be amazing. But now we're talking about like, okay, someone has to go under the knife. Someone has to be the first subject. And even like when we're talking about like animals, like, all right, we're going to chop the head off an animal and try to put it on another one. Even that is kind of like, Ugh. yeah. So have you seen the pictures of the, of the head transplants from the dogs? Yes. I've, I actually <laughs> saw one recently. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's super disturbing. It is. Um, so so the, the, I have a couple thoughts. So, so uh, breeding humans, probably a bad idea because of the whole sentience thing. But what if there was, uh, what if there was like, um, what's the dude that was Morbius? What's his name? Jared Leto. <laughs> Jared, Leto. <laughs> Jared Leto. You know, the <laughs> island he has with all his, uh, his cult, cult yeah. followers and Wyatt. So what if <laughs> yeah. there were like four islands and everybody signed up? like and, and, and like volunteered because that you can't can't really have uh human breeding programs that are like not frowned upon unless it was completely legit you know so mm -hmm. so there's islands and then there's like various experimentations between uh different uh breeding techniques and this and that but what if we what if we we got to the point where we didn't even have to worry about that in terms of like hi hyper speeding up uh human evolution what if you know that technology we were talking about where uh, they they would grow the chickens and the cows without brains and harvest oh, that yeah. meat? Yeah, so yeah, what if yeah. we did that with people? Like, all right, let's say <laughs> – oh well, God. let's say – hold on. Hold oh on. Hear God. me out. Are you, talking about can Are you talking about people meat right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about chankles. I'm talking oh about – so if, if, if – let's say you have – um, all right, let's say you get some genetic material uh, cryo frozen right now, like, <clears throat> like right now. So when it's time and you're 80 ish, you could start swapping out organs because let's say around 40, you started growing like a uh, headless bag, Alex. And, and then and it, it, it's not alive. It's not sentient. It's just a, it's just a massive muscle and organs. And then when you need an organ, then you, you terminate that particular uh, copy of you use the organs that are like prime condition, like really youthful, responsive, new, you get, you keep getting your organs swapped out and, and it, you can make multiple copies of yourself without a brain and then just keep Isn't swapping out organs. Cell? Isn't that no. what that is? No, no. Well, I mean, you can culture stem cells. 
you could you could do that if you wanted stem cell yeah. therapy. You could culture your own stem cells. But but I'm talking about like a whole body slate minus the brain. You get oh, you get uh, just organs, you know, inter interchangeable like Legos. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of indefinitely <laughs> expand your. I would think I would do it. I mean, what's the what's the problem if it doesn't have a brain? What's uh, the ethical problem? I know it looks crazy, but if you really think about it, they're not feeling pain. They don't have hopes and dreams. They're just, you know, they're just organ bags. Okay, but then, then I, think... I have to ask you that, since the brain. Uh goes bad so fast why not grow an extra brain in there well the problem is you can't you can't right now you wouldn't be able to copy all of your i mean your memories are what make you you mm -hmm. like so you the cognitive being that is experiencing everything right now couldn't be copied over anyway so so if swapping out a brain would do nothing it, that you would might at that point you just would clone yourself that it would be just as efficient and you wouldn't have to do any surgeries you just mm -hmm. clone yourself and you have a bunch of copies of yourself. But those are just new individual humans living out their new experience. My point is, is that you the, the, the experience you have right now can keep going on generally in, indefinitely, unless you're hit by a bus, by swapping out all the organs that usually fail. Now, the one problem you'd run into eventually is the degradation of the brain. The, the brain tissue mm -hmm. wouldn't be, you couldn't swap that out. Um, but that's just, you know. At least you're in a better boat than dying at like 95. But isn't that all just what organ transplant is? Isn't that just like being an organ donor is all about? No, 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 no. I'm talking like <laughs> no, this no, no, is no. <laughs> this is this is hand grown for you. You're you don't have to take any anti rejection drugs. You don't have to take immunosuppressants. No, there, there's no fear of organ rejection because it is your genetic copy. Okay. So what what happens if I live my life completely fine? No, like, you know, just like best case scenario, like I, I'm just I'm on track to die of old age. Yeah. But they keep this body going. Are they just going to throw away these meat bags that don't like I didn't need? Yeah, like, why not? Yeah. Uh, what? So we're just going to have a, like, <laughs> well, they're not oh there. Well, I mean, who cares? Well, I mean, every time you remove a vital organ, like if you if you take the heart out of your your meat bag without a brain it's gonna <laughs> die the, the whole system will die anyway you know you maybe you could maybe you could preserve it somehow but like it's just it's way more effective just to keep growing more bodies so you got a, a heart body a lung body and you just you just get you just harvest them when you need them there's no organ donor waiting list there's none of that you just get it whenever you need it Okay, so, I th so what about storage then? Where do I keep my meat bag? Oh, okay. my house? that's where the, that's where the prices will <laughs> will be a problematic because you will have to hire a, a like a medical lab to like you you would rent out of space and you'd probably have to have like you know spend like twenty grand a month just to keep the things alive like indefinitely. So you'd have to like start saving now for sure. Get a really stable 401k, like like really sound investments that have good return in the long run. And just you'd have to be making money to have that because right now it would be just absolutely astronomical. I love how we're calling it meat bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sorry, my, my only thing is and we'll, we'll get on to the rest of these Pennsylvania mysteries because I don't know how we get from Charlie <laughs> the Chimp to this, but is I, I feel like it's such a waste of a human if it's or like i guess this meat bag if they're it's, not yeah they're not humans yeah oh, yeah oh <laughs> this meat God. bag <laughs> well they have they have human <laughs> bodies but without the brain it's nothing oh please oh, nobody I'm, clip that please. we're oh, i mean I'm, we're all we're all hamburger meat come on we're, <laughs> we're, quit, quit lying to yourself <laughs> That's the, the, we got a name. We got a we got a name. We got to make a song. We're all hamburger meat. <laughs> but yeah, I, okay. Any last thoughts on Charlie the Chimp? <laughs> he should have had a meat bag. We could have had him around right now. <laughs> I, I guess so. All right. Um, Sherry May uh, Mahan. 
Um, Sherry Mahan, parents. Okay, so par- parents rarely expect their children to disappear in the 150 yards walk from the school bus to their driveway, but this is just what happened to Sherry on February 22nd, 1985. Children on a school bus had been reported seeing a van with a ski mountain mural painted on the side that was following the bus. Authorities believe that the driver of the van abducted Sherry. Oh, that's kind of grim. Hmm. Which I don't understand why. I feel like, I mean, there was just that movie that came out with all the child abduction stuff, but I feel like it was. I don't know. I just feel like it was more open back in the day. Like it was mm-hmm. more just like people just snagging up people. It wasn't, I don't know. I, I would agree with you. Yeah. Once again, it was just easier to get away with stuff back then. That's sad though. Everything yeah, 100, 150 yards. It really makes you think, though, like today, how connected we are and how, like, between social media and just advancement in law enforcement, stuff like that, like, how fast people will find you. You know, if you if someone reported that van, you know, like today, you know, if that happened, they would find that van in like 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. With the amount of security cameras, people TikToking, mm-hmm. just all that. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, going on to number nine. This one's actually pretty, pretty cool. And uh, Cat Catawassa, Pennsylvania, about two dozen graves in a small cemetery have a a iron cage covering the burial plot. Why did the people who buried these bodies feel the need to erect these structures? Uh, possibly that they were modern examples of a cage built over a site in the 18th to 19th century to prevent thefts of the bodies or was the purpose of something even more sinister local rumors speculate that the bodies were believed to be vampires and that might be the reason why they built these cages that's actually cool yeah on this one i'm gonna say grave robbers for sure i'm gonna i'm gonna put the a picture of what what they look like in in the chat that the this cage story reminds me of the the coffin bells the little bells that they would run a string down to the coffin oh so if someone accidentally got buried alive yeah (laughs) isn't that horrifying yes yeah that's definitely like a top five worst ways to go wake up in your own coffin (laughs) well i mean the hard part's done. You're already in the ground. <laughs> That's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you got to dig that big hole. Digging holes is hard. All right, it's in a. Uh, it's in the podcast uh, chat. Did I put it in the podcast chat or did I put it in photos? No, it's in podcast chat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. They're, well, they're kind of fancy cages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Like, they're not terrible looking. I'm just now seeing her clown robot. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think? Do you think they were uh, vampires? or th- Lily, you were saying that you th- it's pretty much just preventing theft. Yeah. I think so. But then so. Why, wouldn't, why wouldn't you just build the coffin, like, you know what I mean? Just like steel bars or something around it to where it was nearly impossible to open. I think this one acts more as a deterrent. They don't have to like dig yeah. up and, you know, make a mess everywhere. So it's just, it's more work for the grave robber, essentially. Yeah. If they yeah. see that, disturb it. So it's probably for the piece of the grave, you know, mm-hmm. literally rest in peace. They're not going to disturb it. You know, if they dig down six feet and then find out the, can't get into the coffin, you know, they're just going to leave the hole and go to work. Yeah. And your loved one is still being disturbed. I wonder what kind right. of money you'd have to make back then to afford a coffin cage. Mm. Unless it was, unless it was one of these things where you just piled up scrap metal and yeah. stuff like that until, you know, yeah. your loved one died. Man, you know what's crazy is like the ma- mausoleums people used to make. I mean, they still do. It's more rare now. But like those big m- works of masonry 
that were like mm-hmm. family crypts and stuff. Th- those yep. are crazy. There's a few old ones near me I like to look at. Now they that I'm, pretty... I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, they are pretty, pretty interesting, and you know, like mm-hmm. just like it's, it's pretty. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's, but I also think it's one of these things where it's like, all right, if I if I pass away, you guys don't have to spend all this money on a, right. you know, big old tomb for me. That's why you get your plot. You don't have your plot already. <laughs> no, you no, get I'm just ne- counting on my meat now. bag. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, <laughs> the meat bag. We should all have an episode where we meet up and we all go mm-hmm. plot shopping. Because if I'm you out. get it now, you can save money. If you think plot prices are expensive now, think of the burden that your family is going to have to go through in paying for a plot in the future. So are you, you trying get it done to sell, now? Are you trying to sell something? <laughs> I'm just saying it's a wise investment. <laughs> but people, people over here, they get they get testy over it. I mean, there there's people that will buy up uh, their plot and then make a profit on it, like twenty years later, uh, because like some family is is paying way over asking price, and so some people like go ahead and sell it and get like a cheaper plot and, and make some money while they're alive. No way. Oh oh, absolutely. Tulip Grove Cemetery. Good luck. Good luck getting a good spot there. <laughs> Come on. I just don't understand. Like it's it's you. I don't like. I you, understand. Are you saying you don't want to have your hand in your final resting place? I, I, I I'm fine with me. I'm fine with being cremated and then just like mm-hmm. blowing away in the wind. Like I am totally fine with that. I feel like I'm the only one. Every person I come across in life is like, why do you care so much? about your final rest i'm like what how do you not every every i've gotten in so many arguments over this it's, it's bizarre but that's cool you do you i'm gonna save it for my mausoleum <laughs> <laughs> i there was a time where i did want to get frozen and shipped to mars <laughs> okay that's pretty badass <laughs> like i wanted i wanted to be like all right freeze me when i'm like 70 or 80 years old and then unfreeze me in like a thousand years. And they, by then they should have like advancements with the meat bag thing where I can keep on going. <laughs> I'm going to make a company that does that. And I'm, I have, can you imagine it like those, uh, I would just, uh, I would be so paranoid if I paid money now to be shipped to Mars in the future that they're just, they're just putting me in the in- incinerator. Then they're like, yeah, it was a good, it was a good flight. It was a good, good launch. <laughs> So I may have a bit of a, I don't know, maybe an idea of why the vampire theory might be popular. From what I remember, cages like that were, I don't want to say temporary, but they wouldn't keep them indefinitely on the tomb just until the corpses were not worthy or that they, you know, if they didn't have any uh, riches with them. So, I guess if the cages are still here, then okay, okay. I I can I can imagine that maybe it's to prevent a uh, theoretical vampire from getting out. Okay. They they have the actual like vampire cage ones. I think they're in Czechoslovakia. If I, I'll try to No look. way. I mean, I'll try to look it up real quick and I'll put it up if I can. Um remember them. They also did weird things like they put uh, uh they put like some kind of it was like some kind of stick or something in their mouth so that they couldn't bite like it was like, it was like a bunch of weird stuff they would do to the body to like make sure it wouldn't come back as a vampire uh let's see here ooh that reminds me before what you just said Clark before they um uh, before they started removing tongues uh in embalming they would uh they would just get like a bow and 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 tie the jaw shut so the tongue yeah. wouldn't swell. Yeah. Oh man. Let's see if they come up here. You know who we should yeah, have on the got... podcast? Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead, Clark. I was going to say I I'm looking at some of them now. So one thing they would do is not necessarily put a cage over the entire um over the entire plot, but what they would do is they have a metal bar that goes over the neck of the like of the deceased oh. in so that they can't so they wouldn't be able to raise up so like here's a couple of examples 
There's no oh, way. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. And then. So they would be nailed on the back of whatever they were in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was basically pinning the body down. Wow. Here's another one. Wow, this is a this was a practice. These were that one's in Poland, but a lot of these are in like Slavic countries. That's I mean Poland's kind of Teutonic and Slavic, but um, but yeah, Czech Republic and Slovakia, and where you see a lot of these it looks like they're coming from. I don't know where. Here's the one I was telling you where they would put like a rock in the mouth so it couldn't. This one's also in Poland. Oh, my oh goodness. weird. That's intense. Okay. That's a full slab. <laughs> I was expecting yeah. like a smaller, <laughs> you know, a smaller rock, but that's okay. Uh, could you imagine in like a sci fi scenario if uh, humans went extinct and then way into the future aliens finally got here? And and started doing archaeological stuff. The they would be like, "What? What is going on? What were these people doing?" Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so disturbing. That's like that. I'm pretty sure I'll have a dream about that at some point. And here's yeah, a, a full on slab. You're right. I found a Bulgarian one too, where the the actual body was staked through the heart in the coffin. Wow. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna say it. This one was personal. Just stabbing that poor person through their heart as they're dead already? That's personal. That's pretty personal. Yeah, so this one's in Bulgaria. They circled wow. it right the stake. Oh it? shit. Wow. Whoa. It's very eerie uh, uh, how the skeleton is like almost wincing in pain. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ugh. <laughs> you got me. Mm -hmm. Man, it is impressive um, how long bones last. Mm -hmm. It's very creepy. Yeah, if you've ever seen like a bone fresh off the meat it uh it it looks like it would just rot if you like threw it in the yard it would just go away mm -hmm. but they don't like the soup bones that i get make stews with or whatever or let my cat snaw on it like big uh kind of knuckly bone marrow bones from the butcher they look like they would just rot but they do not they will stay they just get uh like sun bleached and harder as, as they stay in the yard bones are weird all right, sweet. My cat's done throwing up. All right, so uh, Sarah Bowman, uh, the mystery of who murdered 14-year-old Sarah uh, Bowman remains unsolved more than 20 years after her disappearance in 1994. Authorities speculate that she might have been secretly involved with an older man who committed the crime. Her remains, however, were identified in May of 2003. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of a sad one to end on. Yeah. yeah. That is a lot. What year was it's that one again? Uh, 19, 90, 1994 is when she went disappeared, but then in 2003, her remains were identified. Which I would think you might be able to, from the remains, figure out what happened. It's amazing what, um, like, uh, who, who, who are the ones that investigate, like, the bones? Like the forensic scientists yeah. thank you clark forensic scientists it is amazing what they can do with just um just bones of a of a human like figuring out like what might have happened yeah it was a good show mm -hmm. <laughs> you're actually talking about the show bones <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> i mean it is a good show that's a fact i've never you know, seen it honestly season. The episode. I really recommend the like the first few seasons are really really good in my opinion. 
yeah then it then it kind of just shits the bed you know you know how it goes <laughs> the last few seasons in my opinion it's very i don't know it 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 is more into the drama side of things than into the mystery you know crime solving kind of deal and huh. it's not my jam that's how not we that's how it's we, bad but that's how we lighten this episode up to end on is what's what's your favorite uh crime procedural go guys <laughs> 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 it's always the couple it's the girl cop and the the quirky guy with a specialty or the uh, vice versa <laughs> yeah yeah gotta get that on-screen chemistry mm -hmm. the uh the early castle is not bad Oh yep, yep. Um, I'm kind of a fan of that. I'm also a very, I'm a big fan of Nathan Fillion and Stana Kachuk. So, mm -hmm. oh, uh, I don't think I've seen that. Oh, please do check it out. It's fun. It, Castle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think that. he's a writer. I think. Or... Yeah, he's, he's a crime novel. Yes. And she's a detective, and he's a he's basically helping the department because he writes like. Yeah, he writes all these like really in depth crime novels. He's kind of like a real life like Jeffrey Deaver or something. So, <laughs> I for a second I thought you were gonna say Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> yeah, 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 the guy who wrote uh, the guy who wrote Bone Collector and um, Blue Nowhere and all those like deep crime novels. Hmm. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Would Murder She Wrote count? Oh, dude, I used to watch that yeah. all the time. Yeah. Probably yeah. one of the best intros ever. It is, Man. yeah. Music. And Remington Steel. <laughs> We're going way back now. <laughs> dude, Matlock, uh, Murder, She Wrote, Remington Steel. Ah, yeah. Okay, I grew up watching a... old people shows. Okay, well, here's a question. Would Batman count? <laughs> no, we're going way too far back. No, I don't <laughs> think so. How would Batman not count? The the show bat the the what's yeah. his name in tights? Yeah, uh, uh, Adam West. Adam yes. West. There we go. Uh, I don't think I've seen a full episode. I I I do have a disturbing tidbit about that show though. Oh, you tell. Yeah, the Robin was uh the heads of the the what you call it the. Uh, Warner Brothers, whoever was running the show, were trying to get him chemically castrated through oh, one of no. their doctors. And um, the reason was because the Catholic Decency League or whatever kept making all of these. Uh, they were like really upset about uh, his shorts and and like it, the, his junk being exposed <laughs> on on film. <laughs> so uh, so they got a doctor like some you know quack doctor and got him chemical castration pills and um he did he took the first round and he felt it, he goes into it in an interview like in depth and he was like i really wasn't comfortable with this i talked to my wife about it blah 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 blah, blah. and um they wanted to eventually have kids and uh but they didn't tell him what this stuff was they were just kind of explaining that you know the problem will go away things will be smaller down there and don't worry about it and uh, he took the first round and got really sick on it and then decided to just say, look, you, you can fire me if you want, uh, but I'm not doing this. And uh, Good for him. Yeah. And, and he eventually had kids. So <clears throat> ha happy yeah. ending to the story. Yeah. But isn't that messed up? It is. See, and, that's, and that's why when you're talking about the genetic testing, that's why I don't think it's too far off. Is look at these. This was an actor. And they were yes. giving him this. I, Nope, I, it does. It don't. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. It's a crazy world out there. Well, with all of the uh, top tens, we we talked for about two hours on oh, wow. uh, about yeah about all of this <laughs> on all this stuff. Um, a lot. To, we covered a lot. Um, had a lot of good you know side tangents. Any last remarks before we sign off? Mm, I would say don't take legal advice from <laughs> podcasts <laughs> but... <laughs> and uh, remember to water your meat bag yes, yes. Just whatever you do <laughs> i'm putting that on a shirt i gotta write this down water, water your meat bag <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm gonna make a couple of designs and then I'm gonna toss it up. You guys tell me which one you like. Water your meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I have a um, I have I found the perfect, perfect image for our uh, hunting Hitler episode uh, okay. for a sh- for a shirt, and I'm just gonna go ahead and make the shirt. And then I, I I want I want everyone's opinion. <laughs> Deal. Are, so are, are you gonna put the design on Zazzle? Yeah, I'll put the design on Zazzle. I'm, I'm not gonna put it on the uh, on the thing because uh, I kind of want everyone. I need other people's eyes on it because I don't know how appropriate it is. Okay. I'm a, I'm a T- very bad gauge of what's appropriate. <laughs> Toss it in the content engineering chat, and then we can take a look at it. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you, the listeners, for stopping by once again. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to actually listen to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're we're growing day by day, and that's because of you. You're taking the time to listen to us, so we really appreciate it. Uh, just remember the old saying here, we don't want stuff that's normal. We want stuff that's effing weird.